Senator Van Batchik. Ask you here, and uh, just, I'd just like to ask the leader that uh, we might, after Easter, at some point, have a debate in this House on, uh, method, uh, on the best means of tackling issues around sexual harassment, uh, particularly sexual harassment in the workplace. And I say this because we've got a survey on, ongoing at present, which members will be aware of, as we've all been emailed about it, um, initiated by the Women's Caucus, seeking to uh, discover the extent to which harassment is an issue in the workplace, that is, the Oireachtas, the House of the Oireachtas. Uh, the first time that such a survey has been carried out in the Oireachtas, so it's very important that we do that, that uh, we get a, a wide range of, of participants, that we get um, a significant buy-in to the survey. But I also ask this because uh, there's been a, quite a number of different initiatives taken just very recently on this issue, and I'm, I've, uh, uh, I've already welcomed um, in another, another forum um, the announcement last Friday by Minister Mary Mitchell O'Connor that she is giving uh, €400,000, uh, she's putting that towards uh, uh, funding for supports to uh, deal with sexual harassment in third level in higher education institutions. And this builds on work being done by the National Women's Council of, Ar uh, Council of Ireland, which obtained uh, significant funding from the EU to, uh, to look comparatively at sexual harassment in academia across five different EU member states. And, um, They've la they launched just in March of this year a very useful toolkit called it stops, hashtag it stops now, really giving information and guidelines to third level institutions as to how best to deal with sexual harassment, being mindful of the need for fair procedures in workplaces and uh, uh, of the fact that, you have, that there are various different way guises which harassment can take in a workplace, particularly when you've got staff and students. And finally, just to say that uh, also on this note, that last night in Trinity we were delighted to host um, a very eminent speaker, Dr. Celeste Kidd, now from the University of Berkeley, but one of Time magazine's uh, silence breakers and people of the year in 2017, who spoke out about sexual harassment on the campus where she was then working in 2017 at the University of Rochester, changed a good deal of practices at Rochester as a result, and uh, has become a real leader uh, in terms of speaking out, particularly for women in science and women in scientific research. And uh, I was proud to speak at the meeting at which she spoke last night, hosted by Women in Research Ireland in Trinity. And and we spoke about uh, different means and mechanisms and, um, uh, and strategies that can be used in, in higher education to tackle sexual harassment. But clearly this is an issue that goes beyond colleges. And I would like, Leader, that we might have a debate on this uh, in, in, at some point after Easter. Could I also welcome the fact that we will be debating the divorce bill today? Um, and I know we'll have a chance to debate that uh, uh, later on this evening. But just to say, I, I'm sorry we're not going to be debating more extensive constitutional amendments to Article 41. I would have liked to see us debate not only a change in the waiting time uh, or in the, in the lead up uh, for a divorce but also a change to the definition of family so that we no longer define family as that based upon marriage only and I'd also of course like to see us deleting the provisions relating to women and mothers that uh, have such, use such loaded and sexist language and instead to see uh, gender neutral language used in the constitution so I'm sorry we won't have that more extensive reform before us this evening but I do welcome the, the, the bill we have and finally just to uh, agree with the previous speakers on the issue of the Israeli elections and uh, on the need for parliaments around the world to speak out where we see abuses of power and abuses uh, of uh, human rights occurring. And certainly, uh, I think all of us would have noted with alarm President Netanyahu's comments about, uh, about settlements, given that he's his government has already had such an appalling record of building and, and settlements, of demolition, of moving on of Palestinians, and given that this House has spoken so clearly in supporting Senator Black's Occupied Territories Bill. And I just want to say, to, I suppose finish by saying, if it, uh, the, uh, the uh, context and the speeches around the Israeli election really show, I think, even more clearly the need for that legislation to be adopted and embraced by the government.